welcome to Mobile One The Grid. Coming up, we head for the hills with the Toyota World Rally Team. We celebrate 1000 Formula One Grand Prix. And Porsche look to defend their Sebring crown. To begin today, we head to Almeria in Spain to catch up with World Rally Championship leaders Toyota Gazoo Racing. Tommy Mackinnon's Toyota World Rally team ended the 2018 season on a high. With victory in the final round in Australia, they secured their first manufacturer's championship since 1999. In Australia 2018, it was probably the best way to finish the season ever because we sort of came there to win the manufacturer championship but it's a massive bonus to win a rally at the same time. Also, I had not won a rally for almost two years, and I've been winning at least one rally every season since I started. So it was nearly going down, but luckily this Australia win <laughs> was saving me. Chasing back-to-back -back titles for the first time in 25 years, the Japanese manufacturer's 2019 campaign is off to a flyer. Promising performance in Monte Carlo, the prelude to a dominating victory in Sweden, the championship hopeful, Oif Tanak. We had a good event, obviously it uh, was quite tough at the beginning, but we managed to get a good start position for the second day. After this it was actually uh, quite a green run and yeah, everything was really working. Let's see what comes next, but uh, so far so good. In Tanak, Toyota have massive speed and in Lapala the most experienced driver ever to grace the sport. With the arrival of Chris Meek, they have an unparalleled three-pronged super team looking for a clean sweep of the trophies. There's been a big shift in the driver market this year and uh, yeah, a game of musical chairs, shall we say. I feel in a good place now to be with the team. A lot of learning to do, you know, to understand the car in the different conditions, but uh, the good sensations are still there. Chris is a very fast driver and uh, there is still long season ahead of us, so uh, we will have some pretty interesting fights, I'm sure. But great atmosphere in the team and everybody working in the same direction, so, uh, so that's important. We have all the drivers who wants to win rallies, so that's why probably they call it that, like a super team. We see it later, is it the super team, but uh, at the moment we all have the same target to try to bring the manufacturer championship. Engineers worked hard in 2018 to improve the performance of the Yaris. This year's car includes minor aerodynamic tweaks. But improved feedback and increased torque from its upgraded engine and transmission gives the drivers more confidence than ever. This is one of the best jobs in the world. To take one of these new generation World Rally cars and, and into some of these stages you know, should be the biggest pleasure you can have. And my big priority is just to enjoy it. And if I can enjoy it, you know, I think everything else will fall into place. We did good steps in 2018. Overall, we got new engine, we got some updates on transmission suspension. We haven't had any problems in the first two events. You stop developing, the others will come past you, and very quickly. So what we can say is it's a continuous process, but uh, where we are, we can be happy at the moment. Estonian Tanak came close to a first driver's title last season and will aim to build on an early points lead as he tries to go one better this time around. We are always working on our uh, maximum, we try to do everything we can to achieve this, but it's a long year and uh, never know what's coming, so uh, let's see, but hopefully it's possible. This season Toyota will aim not only for a fifth driver's title, but a fourth manufacturer's crown too, as they look to match the success of the 1990s. Toyota has a great heritage in, in rallying and uh, Toyota was uh, strong in the 90s so for sure now it's been some decades going past that time so it would be nice to do a new history so we keep fighting and working for that.
Next, with the F1 World Championship celebrating its 1000th Grand Prix this season, it's time to start our new series marking the occasion. Today we're focusing on the landmark races of the sport's first seven decades, stretching from the UK in 1950 to China in 2019. The championship's very first race took place at Silverstone on the 13th of May 1950, where Italian Mark Alfa Romeo locked out the four-car front row of the grid. The Alfetta 158s finished two laps ahead of the rest, with Nino Farina leading home a 1-2-3 in the inaugural Grand Prix. The car actually was designed and assembled uh, before the war in 1938 and during the war the problem was to survive uh, because of the bombings and so all the cars were hidden in barns out uh, of Milan. After the war they came back and in 1950 they were able to win with a 3F uh, team, uh, Farina, Fangio and Fagioli they were able to win 11 races on 11 uh, and obviously the World Championship. Fast forward to August 1961 and Germany's Nürburgring hosted race 100. This time there was a British winner, a Sterling Moss in a privately entered Lotus held off the much more powerful Ferraris of Phil Hill and Wolfgang von Trips with skillful driving in the wet conditions. Next up we head to the USA as Porsche set their sights on the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship. After the opening round of the IMSA Championship at Daytona, it's clear that the GTLM class is once again going to be a dogfight between the manufacturers. While BMW took the win in the Rolex 24, Porsche were the only team with both their cars in the top five as they look to improve on 2018. The 2018 season was pretty intense. We have a lot of up and down, but with a lot of uh, great victories like Searing and especially the final race of the season in Petit Le Mans. Unfortunately, we didn't uh, success in the championship. We didn't win, so we still have plenty of goal for this new season. The last championship being in 2015, it means that it's time that we had another good run at it. We're now in the third season with this car. We know everything about it, so it needs to be our year, and I hope it is. 2018 was my second year at Porsche. We were a lot of times in the, in the ballpark to, to win or to fight for the championship, but we made too many mistakes, which was a reason why we did not win the championship. But we had the tools to do it, just have to figure out how to put them together. Continuity in their driver lineup should help them. Going the number 912 RSR, Lawrence Vanto and Earl Bambo welcome young works driver Mathieu Jaminet for the endurance races after his run out at last season's finale at Petit Le Mans. The thing with the Porsche factory drivers is they're all fast, right? So, so fast is a default. We know that. We know we're getting a fast guy with anybody we get. In Matteo's case, it's okay, how can we start advancing this rookie up the ranks? And the six drivers we have, exact same drivers we ended the season with last year. So to have that continuity, not something we've had in the past, we're certainly looking forward to it and really hitting the ground running. I feel pretty good in the team. I like to, to race in America. It's a different atmosphere. Everybody is so friendly. They are really experienced, so I'm just trying to, to learn from everybody, trying to be in the team, and so far it's going well. Welcoming Jam Jam, he's been mega. We're looking at drivers for Petit Le Mans and we said, you know, the young guys, he's definitely one that we want to have and he's been amazing. We're just looking for a guy that gets on well in the team. In the end, it's not individuals out there, it's the whole team. It's from the mechanics to the engineers to the drivers. We all have to work together and the better we work together as a team and a crew, the better um, results we get. Round two is the Mobile 112 hours of Sebring, one of the highlights on the calendar. Last season, the team finished first and third with Nick Tandy, Patrick Pilier and Fred Makovecki chalking up Porsche's 71st class victory at the challenging Florida circuit. It was an intense race. Like always, Sebring is really challenging, so bumpy, so difficult to achieve a great result. Definitely, we give the maximum. We never give up. It was intense, but we know Sebring is never easy, so we will try the same scenario for this year. Sebring 12 hours is one of the most brutal races in the calendar. I mean, just the track is super, super demanding, so that's a big challenge for us. We were strong there last year, we finished third on our car, but we're going to go back there. We know we've got a great package. I think Lawrence and myself, and we enjoy that track. We've got to get Jam Jam up to speed, but that's not going to take too long, and then we're just going to see what we bring. When you look at Sebring, you need to think of it almost as a street circuit. So think Long Beach, which is about the furthest thing you could have from Daytona. And when it comes to the amount of strength you need to have in that car, it's 12 hours of Sebring, every bit as grueling as 24 hours a day total. It's a Sebring 12 hours. You've got to look after the car and look after the equipment for 
majority of the race, but if you get a sniff of a chance of a victory, <laughs> you go for it. It's no holds barred. It's one of those events that if you get the chance to win it, win it once or win it again, you, you just you go for it. After the break, Pierre Gasly drives a virtual lap of the Melbourne Grand Prix circuit, and young F1 hopefuls compete at the Winter Cup. Welcome back to Mobile One The Grid. Still to come, the latest action from IndyCar and the WRC. And we go karting with the future stars of motorsport. Now Formula One as we join Aston Martin Red Bull Racing's Pierre Gasly for a look ahead to the first race on the calendar, the Australian Grand Prix. With testing over, all eyes turn to Melbourne and the start of the new F1 season. Pierre Gasly, it'll be his first race with Red Bull's senior team after his promotion from Toro Rosso. So we headed to the Team HQ in Milton Keynes, UK, where the French ace was keeping his eye in with some virtual laps of the Albert Park street circuit. Really excited for the new season. Um, just thought I will take you for a couple of laps in Albert Park. So here we go. Just starting the lap now. First corner. It's pretty fast one, like medium speed corner, fast chicane, second straight, and second DRS zone, so pretty good uh, overtaking spot. We all enjoy it, uh, of course, because it's the first one of the season, but of course, uh, Albert Park is a street track, so it's really bumpy, close to the wall, so uh, in terms of uh, adrenaline and excitement, it's really high. Um, and yeah, the more risk you get, uh, the more uh, excitement and adrenaline you get as a driver. Quite many chickens on this track, but uh, all quite different. The most exciting uh, part of the track, so the really high-speed chicken, seventh gear. And that's where you get, uh, in reality, the best uh, feeling with the car, and especially where you can really feel the, the load and don't force you out. We're just closing the lap. Last two corners, which are pretty tough, especially. Usually tires are pretty hot, so makes it quite uh, makes it quite tough. Usually I, I go there pretty early, especially for the jet lag, just to get used with the conditions. And uh, I get uh, I got the chance last year to go a bit uh, around the city in the town. First race of the season, Australians really friendly, like to uh, share the, the passion and um, yeah, it makes it really special, you know. Remember first time I've been to Australia, I came back in France and I told my parents if anything's, uh, anything happened in my life and I gotta stop my career for any reason, I think I'd just take a uh, tickets to Australia and go to live there because I just love the mentality and um, yeah, the mindset of the people. They're really enjoying life, easy going, and uh, yeah, it's a great place to be. Hope you enjoyed the few laps around Albert Park. See you at the Australian GP. A double helping of grid action now. Rally Mexico in a minute, but first the opening round of the IndyCar series. As the IndyCar group prepared for the season opener, fans were greeted with the welcome sight of Robert Wiggins back in the pit lane for the first time since his accident last season. Penske's Will Power led the field away from Paul, a record eighth at the Florida Street Circuit. Sebastian Bourdier was looking for three in a row at St. Pete, but the local resident was the first retirement of the day. Ryan Hunter Ray was the next, coming to a smoky stop on the front straight. Star of the race was IndyCar new boy Felix Rosenquist. On the restart, the multi-talented Swede pulled the move of the day to take the lead. The bumpy circuit provided a tough challenge. Ed Jones lost control approaching half distance. Matthias Lace, the unlucky one, unable to avoid his back wheel. As always on the streets, strategy would decide the outcome. Rosenquist exiting pit lane just failed to keep the hard-charging wheel power from passing. 
but it was Joseph Newgarden who took the honours. Extending his second stint, the Penske man timed his own stop perfectly and kept a late charging Scott Dixon and Will Power at bay. This was one circuit that the 2017 champion has not been victorious on. Up until now, Joseph Newgarden, he wins in St. Petersburg. Mexico was the setting for round three of the World Rally Championship. The first true gravel event of the season got underway with championship leader Oitanik first on the road. Timo Sunanen was first to hit trouble, taking a very close look at the scenery. In an incident-filled day, Hyundai's Thierry Neville lost 44 seconds as his tyres delaminated, while this rock ended Andreas Mikkelsen's hopes. Just a single stage win was enough to give reigning champion Sebastian Auger the lead at the end of the day. Saturday saw Crispy in spellbinding form, and as Auger lost time after confusion over a red flag, his new boy stormed into a temporary lead. Elvin Evans was putting together his best performance of the season, but Toyota's talent was on a charge. Completing an impressive weekend, the Estonian won both morning stages to take second. No one could match Auger though, the Frenchman at the wheel of the C3 was a clear 30 seconds ahead. Career victory number 46 takes Auger to within four points of championship leader Tanak. Toyota continued to lead both driver and manufacturer standings. Next up, Rally Corsica. To end today, we're in Italy to meet the next generation of racers at one of the biggest events on the international karting calendar. An hour east of Italy's Monza Grand Prix circuit is South Garda Karting, which every February hosts the famous Winter Cup. This year, we join the competitors at the 24th edition. The Winter Cup usually is the race that kicks off the year, and uh, it's, all, it's just a busy, busy venue every year. Don't know off the top of my head, but yeah, there's the, there's a few teams competing this weekend. I think the Winter Cup is a big event because it's right before WSK, and it's in the central of Italy, so all the good drivers come. So it's really competitive and it's a really good race. Four categories had attracted over 300 entries from 43 countries. In the KZ2 class were more seasoned pros returning to the track where they'd learnt much of their racecraft, including three-time world champion Marco Ardijo and current F2 driver Alessio Lorandi. Well, I'm taking part in the KZ2 race and I'm really, really happy. You know, it's always been a pleasure competing with such a great and experienced driver. I have had the luck to win this races twice in 2013 and 14. It's like a mini world championship. You get all the drivers are here. It's like the first exam of the year you need to pass. I live 20 minutes from here, so despite me not being anymore in the karting world, I cannot avoid being here. So yeah, it's just great. The event attracts teams from all over Europe, wanting to test their youngsters in the one-off event before the World Series season gets into full swing. Going back many years, it was always the first race of the year. It will now it's sort of changed a little bit in the last couple of years. It's a one-off race, so lots of people can come and just put themselves against the best in the world to see whether they're good enough to continue in a European and world level for the year or whether we need to have another year back doing a domestic championship to improve before we come and, and, and try and tackle these big boys on the big stage. Well, it's really nice to see them growing up from mini kart category to up to the seniors, you know, and it's so funny. I mean, on a karting weekend, you have much more of the up and downs and chances than on a race car weekend. So you have so many practices, qualifying, heats, where anything and everything can happen. And it's really exciting. The OK junior and senior classes are where young F1 hopefuls find out if they're good enough to compete on the international stage. I'm in OKJ. And it's a really tough field this year. And the team is really strong. And uh, also the other teams are really strong this year. So it's an exciting year. It's a good atmosphere of having friends around the track. So you can always talk off a track. But once you get on track, it's all serious and have to do the job. In Singapore, there's a track there. So usually we practice there when I was younger. But now we came to Italy because the motorsport here is much bigger. So it's more competitive for me to race and there are better drivers here. Upgraded three years ago, the South Garda track is popular with the racers. The returning ace, Lorandi, was also a reminder of just how challenging karting is. You know, it's quite different to formulas. Here, you're always pushing at the limit. You know, it's not like in formulas where you have to, in the race, you know, keep the tires, manage everything. 
so you have to drive under the limit so you know of course it's less the money but here you are like on the limit all the laps every corner and you're like well let me breathe a little because here it's just you know a short race but extremely amount of effort after two days of qualifying heats all the young racers had high hopes as they headed into sunday's finals this weekend i'd hope to definitely be on the podium and Obviously the ultimate goal is to win, so we'll see. Uh, so get the next couple of heats out of the way and then tomorrow I hope to get the win. My hopes are to be in top three, hopefully number one. In OK Seniors, Harry Thompson fell just short of the podium, finishing fifth in his final, which was run by world champion Lorenzo Travazanuto. In the OK Juniors, it was another Italian, Andrea Kimi Antonelli, who took the win on home turf. But Ricky Flynn teammates James Wharton and Conrad Lawson joined him on the podium. That's it for now, but join us on YouTube, Twitter, and at mobile1thegrid.com for more exclusive rally, sports car, and Formula One coverage. We're your home of motorsport online. Next time, we go behind the scenes at Super Sebring. Yeah, Gasly relives his best F1 result in Bahrain. And Daniel Suarez settles in at Stuart Haas Racing. See you next time.